God, God, we praise you today. God, I pray that as our worship goes up, God, the heavens would come down, God. That, Lord, on earth as it is in heaven would happen in this place today. In Jesus' name, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, oh.
couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. But you came along and put me back together. of 
the goodness of God. Let's sing that again all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so
hearts and minds with the Spirit of God. Mm. You gave us new hearts. Give us new minds. Hey, Church for the City, and good morning. Uh, this is Pastor Kalen coming to you, and just want to welcome you to our service today online. Obviously, we're doing a little bit of work uh, in the sanctuary, and so until that gets done, by God's grace, we'll be done by next Sunday, and we'll welcome you all back uh, to, to our new stage and screen and some, some warmth and atmosphere that we've created uh, to the worship experience. Hey, we want to talk today a little bit, since it is Valentine's Day, but this idea of being my Valentine. I don't know if you remember as a child, maybe grammar school, I, I remember some very specific feelings on Valentine's Day, the times that we did that as kids. And there was probably some times of excitement and fun and maybe a little, some times of maybe worry that I wasn't gonna receive any Valentines from some of the other kids. And the excitement of walking around to each desk, placing Valentines into everybody's little box. And I don't know if you remember, but those little tiny Valentines cards with those really tiny envelopes. And the teacher would send home a list of all the students in your class and you'd fill those out. And you know, I do, for whatever reason, I remember those as a, as a kid, some very specific uh, feelings to that. I, as a matter of fact, even in the last few years, I've had an opportunity to help Hayden and Sophia, my granddaughters, create little mailboxes for their Valentine's Day at school. And how fun and how exciting it is for those kids to do that. What about you? Do you remember those times? I notice even things now on the Facebook, and it was a big deal that couples will post pictures and talk about their Valentine. And so let's, let's talk about that a little today. There's just a, a few uh, trivia questions I thought I'd bring to you. Do you know who created the first Valentine's box? You know, we think of maybe Hershey's or Mars or somebody of that nature. But in 1822, John Cadbury opened a tea and coffee shop in Birmingham, England. And he soon expanded chocolate manufacturing. And in 1861, his son Richard greatly increased sales by packaging Canber Cadbury chocolates in the world's first Valentine's heart-shaped box. Uh, what do the X's and the O's in XOXO stand for? It's offense and defense for football teams. No, really, X's equal kisses and O's equal hugs. What continent produces the most roses sold in the US? Well, it's South America. It produces the most Roses on Valentine's Day. How many U.S. states have the city named Valentine's? There are four. Valentine, Arizona, Valentine, Nebraska, Valentine, Texas, and Valentine, Virginia. How many cards are sent on Valentine's Day each year? Well, the greeting card manufacturers are very pleased, I believe, but they say that there's approximately 1 billion Valentine cards given every year on Valentine's Day. Only holiday second only to Christmas that sells more. And lastly, what percentage of flowers purchased on Valentine's Day are red? 69% of all flowers are red. I just want to talk to you this morning about three areas when we talk about relationships and some key things that I think will help us in our relational uh, life, right? And the first, first one is this, is understanding that thoughts fuel actions. Our thoughts fuel actions. Proverbs 23, 7 in King James Version says this, For as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. You know, what you believe about a situation or what you believe about a person will determine how you act towards them. It all kind of stems back to this idea of how we think and what we think about. Luke 6.45 says this, A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. 
And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. I think even when Christians try to act and behave and, and respond to people in a Christ-like or a Christian-like uh, manner, even being careful about what people say, if it's in our hearts, it still gets communicated. Whatever's in our heart, whatever's in our mind, whatever is, is deep within the context of our being really is what comes out of the mouth. Jesus really spoke about that in the scripture that we just read. So as we're thinking about our thought life, consider your thought life in context to your relationships. In other words, build your relationships on these Thoughts, And I'm going to read them out of Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. And he says this, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. I think really the key is this, is can we look for the good in people? Instead of always nitpicking or looking for the negative or looking for the weaknesses or looking for the bad things, can we look for the good things in people? I, I think, what a great way to start relationships, right? What a, what a great way to start marriage. What a great way uh, to, to begin developing friendships and even with your coworkers and with your neighbors and with people that we come in contact with, that we would really begin this idea of, of anything pure and true and right and good and admirable, right? Things that are praiseworthy, things that are good, that that would be our thought life in our hearts towards other people. You know, I know even in marriages, and sometimes when we do marriage counseling, it's so easy, especially when, when, when things get difficult, we begin to criticize, we begin to get critical of the things that our mate does. And you know, one of the things that I do as an exercise, almost always, whenever I do any uh, marriage type of counseling, is I will have the wife go home and list all of the things uh, that she sends in, and I will have the husband go home and have everything that list everything that he sends in. And one of the rules that I have and when, we're, when we're doing relationship counseling is that the wife uh, cannot criticize her husband and her husband can't criticize his wife. What they need to do is they need to focus on themselves and, and uh, let God convict the person of their own shortcomings. And then we begin to sow good seed, good thoughts, right, into the, into the relationship. So we want to understand that thoughts fuel actions. And so let's begin with good and admirable thoughts towards other people. Uh, the second thing that I want to talk about this morning is encourage each other's strengths, cover each other's weaknesses. You know, I actually, every wedding that I do, I have a kind of an introductory welcome. And that saying is in every wedding that I do, that, that we would understand that perfection solely belongs to God. But what we do in our relationship, especially in the marriage relationship, our responsibility towards one another is really to encourage each other's strengths. How can we build each other up and praise one another for the things that God's created, the strengths in their life? And what we, we don't want to nitpick or point out weaknesses, but rather cover them. We want to protect our mates. We want to protect our friends from being exposed, right? I, I don't know if you've noticed this. Isn't it interesting how people and how society and the social media are so quick to expose people's failings? Um, they make fun of them or they accuse them publicly, right? And they begin to judge those people. I think it's really a travesty. I, I think God's called us to go beyond that. Let's, let's be honest. Honestly, all of us are guilty of most all of those things we accuse other people of anyway. We just didn't get caught, right? So let's, let's look at the story that Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 18. And it says that there was a, a servant that owed a master a tremendous amount of money. And when the master called him to account, he went in to, to settle accounts with his master. And he just begged him. He said, I don't, I don't have it. I can't forgive the debt. I Give me more time. And, and the master chose to forgive him the debt. Wipe, wipe the slate clean. And then 
What that servant did is he had another fellow servant that owed him a small amount of money. And so he went to him to ask him to get accounting from his fellow servant. And that fellow servant, same kind of response, begged him. He said, I don't, I don't have the funds. I, I don't have what, what can you know, give me some time. He kind of asked for mercy. And, and that servant refused to extend the same mercy that he had received from the master. And this is what it says in verse 32. It says, then the master called that servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? We're already talking about extending grace to people and making allowances for weaknesses in their lives, especially in our, in our relationships, close relationships. You know, we all have faults. We all have shortcomings. We're all sinful. We're all broken human beings. And so I say it's wise to make allowance for each other weaknesses. Ephesians 4.2 says this, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. So we want to encourage each other's strengths, to build people up and to thank them and, and praise them for the, for the wonderful, great things in their life. And we want to cover their weaknesses, not point them out, not be nitpicky, but really extending great grace. I, you know, we've been doing a series really out of Ephesians chapter four, and the apostle Paul says that he wanted, God wants us to have a walk that we, in our calling that we received, a walk that's worthy of the calling. And that's really what that was about, is that we would be completely humble and gentle and be patient and we would bear with one another. And so that really is a, a walk that's worthy of the calling that God's called us to. The third point is this. Families fight. <laughs> you know, brothers fight. And I think what the point I'm trying to communicate here is the closer we are, especially in, like in church, right? In the church relationships, there's a brother and sister relationship because we're brought into the family of God. You know, I have a sister, Karen, and we've all our lives, we've probably had a little nitpicky fights with one another. But you know, we're still family and she's still my sister and I still love her. I'm still committed to her. And there's a bit of a familiarity with people that we're close to, the people that we've walked with for a period of time, people that we get to know. But you know, the more that I know my wife, the more that I see maybe failings or, or shortcomings in her life and vice versa that she sees in my life. And so the more we get to know each other, the greater opportunity that we have to be mad at one another or to fight with one another or to, you know, to have quarrels or Whatever, right? So there's a bit of familiarity with people that are closest to us with, with longer relationships. And, and, and even this idea of us taking each other for granted at times. I mean, we just get so used to being with one another that, that we can. We can take each other for granted. And, you know, there's a place where we serve one another because we love one another. But, but we do it over a long period of time. And then what we begin to think is because maybe there's a little bit of a difficulty in our relationship or maybe there's an offense or something that's said or done that's hurtful. We begin to think and criticize and maybe we get that in our heart and we begin to think that maybe it's greener on the other side of the fence. I had a pastor friend of me uh, mention that just a few weeks ago and he said, you know, instead of worrying about how green it is on the other side of the fence, why don't you just water your own lawn? <laughs> We, we invest in our own lawn. We invest in green and, and fertilizing and taking care of our own relationships, our own uh, responsibilities in the area of, of church life and marriages and friendships and coworkers and neighbors and, and the whole gamut, right? So this is really what it, I think family really is this picture, this idea of, of being committed to one another because we're, we're family is really an idea, that idea of covenant relationship. You know, if we're not blood or we're not born into the same family physically, but we're born into the family of God, there's an element of covenant relationship. That's, that's really what a marriage relationship is, is is a covenant relationship. And so we work through the difficulties. Uh, my grandma used to say this. She used to say that blood is thicker than water. <laughs> well, what does she mean by that? Well, blood holds you together. I, it's amazing to me when we think about Arab countries, and I don't know if you've noticed, but over the years, Arab countries, like these different tribal uh, Arab uh, communities and, and countries, will they'll fight with one another all the time. I mean, they'll go to war against one another.
But it's interesting, as soon as a foreign country comes in and, and attacks one of those neighboring Arab countries, all the other Arab countries will kind of rally together and defend the very people that they got angry with because they said they're our brothers. There was this kind of a sense of kind of a kind of a weird thought process, but there's a sense of, of covenant relationship because of their heritage and because of how they're related. They they help one another, defend, but they still have internal fights. But there's something about really defending their brothers uh, when there's an attack from the outside. And so I'm just kind of talking about this idea and understanding that that we just get familiar with one another. We just know each other so well that sometimes we fight. You know, but, but we're brothers and we're sisters and we're committed to these relationships because they're important. So this is, this is kind of my thought behind that is that we can put up with a lot from people who we love a lot. When we really love one another, there's a lot that we will put up with. There's a lot we'll forgive. There's a lot that we'll understand. There's a lot that we'll extend grace to. And I think rightly so. I think that is the thing that we should do. So 1 Peter 4.8 says this, Above all, love each, or each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Just really deeply loving one another. I, I think looking at others with love, you, you know, just a, approaching others with that idea of even how God has loved us and that we can extend love to other people, even those people that are disagreeable, people that hate you, people that would maybe be seemingly enemies, people that, uh, you know, would persecute us even. I had a, just recently, the last few weeks, I was driving home just through my little neighborhood and, and uh, I had a, a gentleman behind me chase me down. He pulled right up to my driveway, pulled my car into my garage and and he's, you can tell he's a little upset the way he's driving the car and backing around and turning the corner and doing a U-turn. And, and I knew I had done something. He actually tailgated me on the way home and, and I realized that he was upset about something. And I had a choice to make. I, I could go out and engage the guy and get in a fight and argue and scream. And, but what I chose to do is just go out and engage the gentleman, find out kind of what the situation was. And, and he thought that I had tailgated him earlier and I was driving too fast through the neighborhood. <clears throat> I don't remember that. I don't, I don't, I, I just, I, I didn't see myself doing that, but he obviously thought I did. And so I just calmly and politely just engaged him and I apologized to him. I just said, you know, I'm really sorry uh, that that had happened. And, and uh, you know, thank you for letting me know. And, you know, you don't know what's going on in that guy's life. He might've had a bad day, something difficult going on at home. You know, who knows? But we really do have a choice that, that we would engage people with love, with a deep sense of, of, of approaching them, not to get be, make ourselves right or make ourselves known or, or by golly, I'm going to hang on to my opinion, but rather extending love deeply from our hearts and uh, knowing that our love covers a multitude of sins. And so I, I think those are really three great ways that we can really on Valentine's Day today that we just begin to practice that we would think good thoughts towards those that we have relationships with and believe the best in people and that we would encourage people's strengths, right? That we would cover their weaknesses, we would love them and praise them for their strengths. And then lastly, we, we understand that especially in close relationships, difficulties come, that God has called us to love one another through those difficult times. So thank you so much. I hope you have a, a great Valentine's Day and and uh, we hope to see you next Sunday at our facility. I just want to close with this, this little saying. May your day be filled with opportunities to love others in ways that genuinely translate God's care for them, even in the smallest ways. May God bless you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. I also want to thank you for your giving. You know, you'll have a, an opportunity to, to find ways to give uh, posted on, on the screen. Thank you for, for your giving, your tithes and offerings. And, and I know we've, we've communicated that we are doing some building uh, fund opportunities. And so if you want to, you know, if you feel led to give towards our building projects, we'd love to have you do that too. You can do that on the app. And we do have a budgetary item listed. If you're 
you're interested in knowing those budgets are and what the uh, what the expenses are, you can certainly go to our app and click on that as well. So, hey guys, thank you so much for your generosity. Thanks for being a part of the church. And uh, you guys have a, a blessed day.